Hey, welcome back to our Friday afternoon series on networking videos. I'm Bruce Hartfence. Today we're going to talk about tunnels and VPNs, and in particular, GRE. Well, a good question to ask when we get started here is, what is a tunnel? Uh, usually a tunnel means that we're going to encapsulate traffic inside of another header. So it's very common to have say an IP packet and we want to move it across the network either in a secure fashion or because whatever we're trying to do isn't supported and so we have to wrap that packet inside another packet. So what that means is that you're going to have two layer 3 headers and that's the common approach to this. We have a whole bunch of examples that we use on a regular basis. Historically we might look back at something like Apple Talk where you were trying to get two nodes talking to each other with a suite of protocols over an IP based network and they just can't. So what you do is you put the Apple Talk packets inside of an IP packet and then send it along. Now a more contemporary version is something like IP version 6 where you've got IP version 6 nodes trying to talk to other IP version 6 nodes and we have to cross an IP version 4 network to get there. So what do you do? You take this IP version 6 packet, put it inside an IP version 4 packet and then send it across, strip off the IP version 4 packet, and then send it on to the destination. That's kind of how it works. So that's what tunneling really means. So we've got encapsulation. A lot of times we have to update routing tables to get this to work. But there's two other important ideas that I want to mention here, is that as creative as we might get with headers, we still have to use the routing tables that are in place. And then on top of that, tunnel packets are not always encrypted. In fact, a lot of times they're not. We're used to thinking about tunneling in conjunction with protocols like IPsec, but that's not always the case. All right, so we'll talk quickly about our first example here is our VPNs. So a lot of times you're working from an unsecured location or you want to connect into work resources, and so you spin up a virtual private network. So you get a client, you spin that up, what actually ends up happening? Well, you build a tunnel between you and the VPN server. Now, we also call this an overlay network, which means that you're going to install a, a route and you're going to install a network that communicates something over the already existing network. And in this case, the point is to encrypt data. So the first thing that you do is create the tunnel with the encapsulation that we've talked about. And then you say, I'm going to change my routing table. And anything that uses this routing table entry will also be encrypted. So that's kind of an important idea here. Um, we see that uh, this kind of integration with network technologies all the time. We have a network and we want to support additional services. There are a couple of flavors of VPNs. Uh, the first one that we'll talk about, maybe the easiest one to understand, is uh, a site-to-site -site VPN. The clients in this case have no idea that a VPN is actually in progress. The two endpoints there on the network are routers or what we call VPN concentrators and they're also our tunnel endpoints. So if we're looking at traffic flowing from left to right the left router encapsulates the traffic and encrypts and sends the traffic down the tunnel and then the other router detunnels the traffic, decrypts the traffic and then sends it on to the destination. So the routers of the tunnel endpoints uh, sessions are the user data that we're, that we're sending over the tunnel. And again, the clients have no idea that the tunnel actually exists. Next up, we have the standard client-server VPN. This is, this is what we're most familiar with, I suppose. You have a client all the way on the left, and the client has a VPN client riding on it. So the one that we use around here is the Cisco client. And so what ends up happening is you start your VPN client and it goes out and connects to the VPN server all the way on the right there. Now it's a standard TCP connection, but then we uh, log in and username and password and maybe some certificates in there involved. But the point is that you're going to log in to the remote destination and establish an initial tunnel. And then we spin up a session tunnel for that connection. Now the important point here is that well, points, I'll say, is that we are going to establish this tunnel, meaning that we're going to get an IP address resident on that remote network, and we're going to establish a connection 
with the VPN server. And then we're going to decide to encrypt whatever goes across the tunnel with whatever algorithm we happen to be using. Once the traffic gets to the VPN server, then the VPN server detunnels the traffic, decrypts the traffic, and then sends it on to maybe corporate email there. Now, importantly, the VPN server is commonly a DHCP server as well. That means that over the tunnel, you're going to get an IP address on that remote network. And that's really an important idea. So in this case, if we're talking about IPsec, we very commonly deploy another tunneling protocol like the Layer 2 tunneling protocol to build the tunnel over which we're going to send encrypted traffic. Now, what does that all mean? Well, the Layer 2 tunneling protocol is a, a protocol that allows two nodes to appear to be on the same network even though they cross a routed infrastructure. And that's all I'll say about it for today. But that's how we establish our tunnel. What we also need here is an update to our client routing table. So let's take a look at that. On the left, we have the client routing table before the VPN. And on the right is after. And you can see here that the routing table is expanded because I have not only gotten an IP address on the remote network, but also my routing table has changed to include an additional default gateway. And what that means is that instead of sending things the way that I would normally, what I'm going to do is send traffic to the VPN server and it will handle the forwarding of the traffic. So that's an important idea. You build a tunnel, you decide that whatever's going over the tunnel will be encrypted, and then you also have to get an IP address on the remote network and change your routing table. Now the generic routing encapsulation protocol, or header, is a very common uh, protocol that we use for tunneling traffic across a network. So here the description is transporting IP over IP. And really, again, what we're doing is just changing the header to include an additional layer 3 header. And this is how we're going to accomplish tunneling in this case. Now there's a bunch of RFCs. I've listed the, the main ones there for you. And then the, an important idea here is that the protocol ID changes in the IP header to be 47, as opposed to whatever you might have been carrying before that, ICMP, TCP, or UDP. Now I promise, if you're a little confused at this point, uh, we're going to do an example and I'll show you some packets and then life will become a little more clear. Now as we said, the GRE tunnels are unencrypted. So the whole point here is that we're going to take the IP packet that we were originally sending and we're going to wrap another cozy IP header around it. But this time, instead of being your protocol that you were carrying, your traffic, we're going to carry GRE. So that means that in the header, you're going to see two IP headers, or in the collection of headers, two IP headers. So it looks a little confusing, but one is just to get you from one side of the tunnel to the other. The other one is the original IP packet. So here is an example of an encapsulated packet. Hopefully you can see this clearly, but if you look at the first IP packet, if we're traveling down from the top, you can see that the source and destination addresses are 2.2.2.253 and 3.3.3.254. And this is the, the two sides or the two endpoints of the tunnel. Scrolling all the way down there, you'll see that there's a generic routing encapsulation, and that encapsulates the original IP packet. In this case, destined from going from host 1.1.1.1 to host 4.4.4.1. That's the original IP packet. And this is what we mean by encapsulation. And you can see clearly there are two IP headers. Let's put this together. When we build a GRE tunnel, we need a physical interface to be tied with the tunnel. Now this can be an IP address or an actual physical interface. I'm going to use physical interfaces so it's very clear what's happening. The tunnel doesn't exist on the routed infrastructure, that is to say, it's a virtual construct, but it does use the routing tables that already exist. Only traffic traveling over or routed over the tunnel will be encapsulated in a GRE header. Everything else is treated normally. We also, in addition to specifying the start of the tunnel, 
the physical interface, we need to tell the tunnel where it terminates. So we're looking for an endpoint on the opposite side of our topology. And then we have to do the reverse in the opposite direction. So here's our example. We have three routers, and in the middle, we're also going to install a firewall that prevents ICMP. So if we were going to ping from our, in between our two nodes here, it would not pass the firewall. And the reason that it doesn't pass the firewall is because the firewall looks inside the IP packet at the protocol ID, and it looks for ICMP traffic. That's what we installed. So what we need to do is find a way to bypass the firewall, or the ACL. But it, remember that tunneling is used for a lot of reasons. We're just going to do this as an example here. So this is another way of looking at it. So we're going to, that's where we're going to build our tunnel between the two outside routers, and you can see where the firewall resides. The tunnel will give it its own IP addresses. These are pingable. It'll show up in routing statements. It'll show up in trace route. And all the traffic will be modified so that our routing tables will direct traffic for the Fournet over the tunnel. So again, we have to build our tunnel, and then we have to change the routing table entries on the two outside routers to use the tunnel. Anything going over the tunnel then will be encapsulated inside GRE. So all the traffic will still be seen by the firewall, but the magic will be that instead of seeing the ICMP protocol ID, instead it'll see the GRE protocol ID. And in the end, our encapsulation, if we, this is the same packet, but it's just all those headers collapsed, but it's just a little easier to see our encapsulation at this point. The outside wrapper there, the two and the three net, that's our tunnel, and the inside 1.1.1.1 to the four network is the encapsulated packet. Here is the configuration. So these are both ends of the tunnel. You can see that we'll just follow this down from the top. Both routers on the outside have a tunnel zero interface. And it's just exactly what it sounds like, int ton zero or tunnel zero. I've given them IP addresses on the five net. I've specified the source. Now this is the internet side. And I'll be more specific with the diagram here in a second. But it's the, the side facing the uh, the firewall, what I'm calling the internet side. So those are the sources of the tunnels, and then we point the tunnels to the opposite side's destination, or using the destination as the opposite side. So we're, we're specifying the interface on the rightmost and the interface on the leftmost routers. And then, of course, we can see the addressing that's used on these two routers. The one on the left is spanning the one in the two net, and the one on the right is spanning the three and the four net. Here are our IP route statements. Uh, we need to tell the router on the left how to get to the 3 and the 4 net. And we need to tell the router on the right how to get to the 2 and the 1 net. Now I'm not going to explain in detail how these work. Hopefully you've got a good handle on routing statements. If not, go back and watch one of my other videos. And here is a little more detail about the topology. In order to get this to work, what I set up was a tunnel that's specifically between those two interfaces on the inside indicated by the red arrows and then the tunnel endpoints are the the two and the three net interfaces specifically and that's how you get your tunnel to work when you make the routing table changes anything going over the tunnel will use that GRE encapsulation really important tool really very nice for specifying pathways that you want to use in encapsulation format, and then maybe uh, having traffic that's not supported traverse your IP version 4 network. Well, that's it for this one. This has been a short intro to tunnels and GRE. I hope you got something out of it, and I hope you get a chance to go and try your own GRE tunnels. They're pretty fun to play with. Swing by BruceHardFence.com for packet captures and other stuff, and hey, may your packets always reach their destinations.